That's it. Just a solid 20. And that was that. Nothing to worry about. Just got my work done. I'm lying. Showed up high most of the time. <laughs> so was it, uh, explain me what an alternative school is. So, imagine if you will, a school where all of your students with behavioral issues go to. A lot of the time. Um, well, help. A lot of the times, uh, an average school, and then normal students have students like out this day. Okay. And or students who have special needs that are beyond the school can uh, compensate for. Okay. So they'll send them to the district's alternative school, which will be more of a school for kids who act out or who need extra help. A lot of the times, those kids who act out. That's what they typically use for. They're usually like the teachers that you hear about snapping are using from alternatives. Oh, uh, okay. Like the lady that was like, <clears throat> a few years ago, there was a f***ing class meme video. This fat f***ing female teacher screaming at her students. And she's like, no, pomegranates! And then one of the students is laughing. She goes, no, pomegranates! I don't want any of that in here! I like, she lost her a lady like that would have been from an alternative school. I think I saw that actually. The out and everything. So in this alternative school, the principal, Mr. Pollard, Pollard. Pollard, was he one of the most influential people? Probably the third or fourth most influential people. Sorry, 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 sorry. That's your fault. Okay. Not mine. Okay. Yeah. Whoa. Now, were you getting any support at home? Is that something um, that you'd like to talk so about? So my mother did her best. Being that she was kind of dying of cancer at the time. And her friend at the time, I was joking her boyfriend, I would always buy her stuff, take her out, stuff like that. Um, and the thing was Larry. And me and him never really saw eye to eye necessarily. It wasn't that we hated each other. We had respect, we cared about each other. Um, but it was just like, he just didn't know how to interact with me a lot. And he was very stuck in the old way of thinking. He would try to um, <clears throat> talk about more brutal sides of history, like heading up all the times. So like if you see the remains of nephew, they'd be sitting there. And he would talk about like D-Day and how men were being <laughs> bus sawed in half by the <laughs> LMG the Germans had. That's what they're looking at and just go, hey, Mike, you can't, you can't talk about this. Mike, this is like, Mike, this is too far. You can't talk about this right now. So was that the main like uh, disruption between you guys? Uh, between just, it really was a communication thing. It really was. So like, he wanted to try and help me lose weight, right? His way of going about it was with an almost bully angle. Him and his buddy Larry, uh, like some married man, um, kind of courted me on the stairway and they started just kind of hammering at me about, uh, my eating habits and how I was doing and it was a very complicated kind of way of doing about it and I just remember it was one of those few times where I lost my cool with him and I was just literally like Mike you gotta get the fuck out of my way because like the way you guys are going about this ain't how you want to go about it because this is how you guys get laid the fuck out and you get really humbled real quick yeah you old heads might have been in the military but I'm young and I got a lot more fucking mass than you I was like you two need to leave me the fuck alone because this is becoming like because they had bothered me about it all week. This is like, what do you want me to do? It's not going to go away in a week. It's going to take years of hard work. Is there anyone else in your family that's overweight like you? Uh, my mother was, my grandfather on her side, and then I don't remember my grandmother on her side as well. So would you say that it's something in the family that I wouldn't say encouraged, but kind of wasn't really worried about too much? No, they were worried about it. My mother tried to push me to work out a lot when I was really young, between the ages of like one to about ten. I'd ride my bike every day a couple of miles. Um, even after my father died and I got depressed, I was still riding my bike a lot. I just, at around 14 ish, I stopped doing all that physical stuff and just started sitting on my ass because I was just like, I don't know, nothing was bringing me joy at that point. So at that point, that's when I really started to lose it. Right. Do you think that like the passing of your father was. <laughs> Contributing to you a lot, maybe a way to deal with your emotions? Well, 100% that's what it is. I, I say this multiple times. Do not turn to food for comfort. 
that was my mistake. I was 10 years old. I didn't have a lot of control in my life. The one thing I controlled was what the f I shoved in my mouth, and I decided at the time, f it. I'm just eating all this f food as a way to, you know, make myself feel better. You know, and it's just, it's not smart. It's not a good thing to do. I regret it completely. And I did the same thing. I and did the I same literally thing. destroyed my life till I was 16. And at 16, I just remember looking at myself, and I had 511 pounds of the heaviest. And I said, nah, nah, I can't do this anymore. Uh, I told my mother that if I hit over 500 pounds, put me down like a dog because I had uh, given up completely. Right. We go to the doctor and I says, 511, she's like, you still want me to do it? I'll look at the gun. I said, nah, I want to give it a try and try to live. And it has been a fucking fight and a half since. Yeah. I'm teetering between 420 and 380 for the past couple of years. Something I noticed that you said, um, that you were 10 years old, that you almost should have known better. I think at 10 years old, you're still very much a child. I mean, you are a child. Yeah. And so, while you probably shouldn't have ate as much, I don't think that you should hold as much criticism for yourself, because at 10 years old, you really need parental figures and, and people to steer you in the right direction. Yeah, true, but like, I don't know, it's kind of hard when you have an aunt who's always putting you down for the things you'll enjoy. You've got an aunt who wants nothing to do with you, but she hates you. You've got a mother who's completely mentally destroyed from losing her husband and has no true way to take care of it. And then, of course, she ended up getting cancer, so I had to become my own adult. Like, by 12 years old, I could call up the, the bills and pay the bills. No problem. So you sort of had to parent yourself? And to an extent. My mother was there. She offered me all the support she could. Um, like I said, it wasn't like it was by their own choice. My father f***ing died of lung cancer, and then, you know, she became depressed and eventually got cancer herself. It's something that, you know, there wasn't really any control in that department of what was going to happen. But I also like to think I at least did a semi-good job of what I've done so far. Yeah. I understand that maybe I have some areas I'm going to struggle with the rest of my life, like um, processing my emotions. No, my mother like was working on that with me because being autistic as is, it'd be hard to uh, work on my emotions. So without her being in my life, it makes it harder. But like, I don't know, it's just, I miss, her, I miss the two of them. Yeah. They were both very positive influences in my life. Well, I appreciate you sharing that with me, man. After hearing what you said, it kind of seems like the cards were stacked against you, you know? And oh, 100%. I had, instead of being cards being stacked up against me, it was a place just stacked up back, back to back. And it was like when I fell down and fished, and, I, and my chin just hits one knife, hits the next knife, hit the next knife, hit the next knife. And now I'm kind of flopped out at that fucking floor on the stairway, bleeding from the chain, going, yep, I'm alive, you know. And you're sitting there hearing that, oh, my God, you know. Well, you've, been, you've done great, man. I mean, a lot of times addictions are a response to trauma to try to soothe ourselves. Like, my addiction, nobody can see. No one can know that I'm a, an ex-heroin addict, an ex-meth addict. Oh, really? I have five years of sobriety. And I always... Congrats, yeah, man. thanks, man. And I always felt kind of guilty because some people's addictions, like, they can't hide, you know? Like, uh, yeah. like, like you're eating. And so, 100%. Um, getting to know you, it seems like you're a good guy. You know? It seems like you're generally pretty happy that you just want to have a good time. So I think all things considered that your eating is your big crutch is, is pretty amazing because you could have turned into a complete... You could have turned into a, like a vindictive person. I could have been person. the most angry person on earth. Yeah, you could have turned into like a horrible drug addict. So, a lot of times, I just I think it's really unfair for people to, to harshly criticize what they see externally, but not know all the things behind the scenes what happened. Yeah. Nobody knows. Yeah. Well, nobody ever is going to know every little detail. And I don't. And I never. And here's the crazy part, right? When I talk about my life and the things that have happened to me, I never get upset with the people who are like, I don't believe in you. Because some of the shit that's happened, like the dog attacks, with the bullies I've had, it's really hard to believe this happened. And I've got no reason to sit there and get mad, like, oh, this happened, this happened. It, yeah. and I've been through it. I've gotten through it. And I'm not going to give up whether or not a person believes me or not. If a person doesn't believe that the sky is blue and they're telling me it's green, am I going to give a f***? No, because I know the sky is blue. Oh, it's pretty far as in, right? 
I know, I know what I've been through. I know the things I've experienced, and whether or not people want to hear it, it's up to that. Yeah, I think good things are comforting, man. You just got the house. And what's great with like yeah, modern, you know, medicine is that we can get gastric bypass surgeries. We can start lifting weights. I don't think that you're sailed and gone so far away. There's no returns for you. Yeah. So I hope that you know that. I hope that anyone that tries to criticize you, like this ain't over for you. You're gonna keep fighting. And I do believe that. And that's something that I advocate for because I had to fight in my own life, you know. And uh, this little bit that I got to know you, man, I just. If you ever want, if you ever get to that point, you want to pull the trigger on that, start lifting weights. I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm pretty average when it comes to the gym. We can work out together, bro. We'll figure it out. You know, I wouldn't be a bad idea. Cool. So you got, you got any closing thoughts? Well, yeah. Hey, you know what? When the time seems darkest, that's when the hope is the brightest. If you don't believe me, let this home be a symbol of it. Because instead of me being Batman and secluding myself in the Batcave and not letting anyone see it, I want you guys to see my home because this is the Batcave. <laughs> 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 <laughs>